In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel hair and a Letting the girl about his loins, and his meat was locust and wild honey. Then went out of him, then went out to him Jerusalem and all of Judea and all of the region round about the Jordan, and were baptized of him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Bring forth therefore fruit meatful for repentance. And think not to say within themselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth forth not fruit, good fruit, is hewn down and is cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water to repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. May the Lord have blessed to the readers, the ears and doers of his word. Just for a little while, I'd like to speak from the topic, the announcement. The announcement. Birthdays and anniversaries and parties and social clubs and gatherings all try to appeal to your senses through their announcements. Look at them now on social media, they're nice and glamorous and flashy and glittery, all to catch your attention, to let you know that something is going on either today, tomorrow, or in the days to come. Some are, are, are more important it's important to a family to celebrate someone who celebrated 100 years of being alive. It's a 
support her son to you know, come out because their baby is graduating from pre-K. If we celebrate pre-K, what kind of celebration are we going to have when they graduate from high school? It doesn't matter to the outside looking in. The importance is only to the person who's announcing. I might see your announcement and scroll right on by. Because I feel like it don't pertain to me. I don't feel like giving any money, any time, any attention to the announcement. But the next person that sees it might go in and market it and calendar and show up on time and show out because the announcement appeals to what they want to do. But you get maximum come out, turn out, if you have an announcement. Have you ever been to a party that wouldn't announce? You pull up and say, is it, is it the right thing? You be there before I agree. Because the party or the engagement didn't get any attention or attraction because no one made an announcement. But all oh, go to a party that's been announced three months in advance. They, they, they re, repost it every week. They got their homegirls and homegirls to share it. And, and cop it out of there, put it in the mail, and put it in your door. And next thing you know, you get out there, you got a crowd of people because you made an announcement. Uh -huh. Announcement's not always good because some people announce stuff that should stay in the house. Uh -huh. And then they'll make a post behind everybody in my business. Uh -huh. We in your business because you announced it. Uh -huh. If you didn't want me to know, you shouldn't say nothing. But since you have said so, I got something to say. And be aware of the things that you announce to the book. Because words are funny once you put them out. You can't take them back in. And here in the text, we are reading the, the announcement and the announcer of the coming Christ to save all humanity. For anyone that, that had not read about the man we're going to talk about in the text today is the cousin of Jesus Christ. If you read your Bible, you know that at one time while Mary was married, I mean while Mary was pregnant, she went to go see her cousin Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth and, and, and Mary seen each other, the, the, the babies inside them started talking prenatally. They weren't born yet, but it said that when Jesus crossed the threshold, that the baby and Elizabeth started to leap. Started to praise because when you were in the presence of the Lord, you should be able to leap. <laughs> And you should be able to praise that if an instant that ain't the form cap can praise when Jesus is in the building. What more can we when we walk into his house when we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his court with praise and be thankful unto him and bless his name all because of an announcement. Because my announcement was so we can raise their head, I came to Jesus. Just as I was, I was weary, wounded. I was sad, but I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad because I heard an announcement. Most of the time, you read through the Bible when he's going to save somebody, you hear him say, and they heard. Man on the side of the road, and he was blind, he said he heard. And when he heard Jesus coming through, he said, Oh, son of David, save me. The crowd had to tell him to hush, but when you hear the right announcement, can't nobody tell you what to do. I came to Jesus just as I was because I heard an announcement. Yeah. And it's a very nice announcement we're going to check out today. There's three things we're going to see in the announcement. Uh -huh. Three things that we're going to see in the announcement. The first thing is we have to consider the influence of the announcement. We must consider the influence of the announcement. When some people announce stuff, you don't even pay attention. They been talking about they going to Cancun for the past 20 years. Oh, I'm going to make that trip this year. And them the type of people, you get to the point to where I believe it. Well, I see it. Because the announcement has more effect depending on who's announcing it. John is saying to the people that are around him while he's baptizing, while he's preaching, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You 
you can believe John because as you read through the New Testament, the people consider John to really be a prophet of God. It's some other people that question, but they didn't question John. First of all, they didn't question because of how he came. He came and was already told that he was going to be the trailblazer for Jesus. And another reason why they believed because of where he at. He's in the wilderness. I don't know about you. I grew up country. And ain't nobody just really happy about being in the wilderness. There's snakes and, and, and guanas and, and, and monkeys and lions and tigers and bears. Oh my, everything is in the wilderness. But that's what John said. He walked out there and said, you know what? I'm going to start wilderness the Baptist church right here. And he stood there and not only because how he came or where he was, look at what he wore. They say he got to have a camel and a little strap around his loins and he eat locusts and honey. Locusts? Most people only stay around when the locusts come around. That's one of the loudest bugs it is. But their lifespan is one of the shortest of all the bugs. They wait so long to be born that one day they hear the next day, they gone. But he not here to eat locusts while honey when a cow hair and got a strap around his loins. And that's who God used to be his announcer. Which lets us know you ain't got to be the biggest or the baddest to be an announcer for Christ. You ain't got to know uh, all the books of the Bible in the world in line for you to be a witness for Jesus. Get out there in your wilderness and say, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yeah. We made this thing so hard. Let me tell you a simple way to do it. You can give God your heart. He puts you in the wilderness and he says, talk. Not preach, not beat, not argue, talk. The God that put me in this wilderness got me here to tell you that one day he's going to crack the sky. And the dead in Christ that rise and those of us that are remain are going to be caught up. He sent us out to tell them that, baby, today is the day that you can't be saved. Your yesterday might have been terrible. Your past might be horrible. But today, God can turn it all around. Because you have to consider the influence of the announcer. Now, who wouldn't believe a man that's standing in the wilderness with camel hair, strap around his arm, and eating honey? He's going to take two ways. You're going to believe him or you're going to run from him. Because you're going to say, this man is talking about Jesus, or you're going to say, this man is crazy. I can't eat honey and bugs. Talking about repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But the reason why they had to appreciate his influence was because he was baptizing. And not only was, was, was he baptizing, people was coming from the east and coming from the west and coming from the north and coming from the south. And they all, I all want to hear what John had to say, but guess what? John had what message? Repent. But the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He come with the Wall Street Journal. He come with the New York Times. He come with the New York Post. He had in his hand the Bible. He said, "Repent." For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He wasn't worried about if he was black. He wasn't worried about if he was white. He wasn't worried about if he was rich. He wasn't worried about if he was poor. The message was all, all the same. Repent. Hey. I'm standing here this morning. I don't care what you did last night, but you leave me here to do. Repent. Hey. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus Christ returned. He can use me, 
we can use you, we can use anybody. Ain't nothing special about what Michael that for. Oh, look, this is the same that God got his hands on me. You've got to consider the influence of the announcer. This man was born to blaze the trail for Jesus. He said, there come one after me whose shoes I can even buy. You got to consider the influence of the announcer, John the Baptist, is just doing what he's supposed to do the right way. And I'm here to tell you, if you do what God called you and do it the right way, people will listen. And if they don't listen to your mouth, they'll listen to your walk. They might not hear your mouth, but they see how you acted when somebody treated you wrong. They see how you can cut somebody out when they step on your toe in the grocery store. They see how when the line was wrong, somebody jumped you, you ain't jumped in, you just stayed in line. Because if they don't hear you talk, they can listen to your walk. First off, you got to consider the influence of the announcement. Uh -huh. Secondly, you got to, we have to look at who the announcement intrigued. We have to consider the influence of the announcer, then we have to consider who was intrigued by the announcement. First, he said it coming from the east, the west, north, south, and all the region. Then, it comes first down, it says, then the Pharisees and the Sadducees showed up to church service. They had nothing separate to say about the folks that was coming from you, from, from Judea, Galilee, from all regions. But he had put up special inserts in because the Pharisees had to come from the east, the west, the north, or the south. So why they wouldn't include it with everybody else? Because the Pharisees and the Sadducees were the governing bodies of the day. These are the people that were so in love with their position that they were going to uh, get away from God's power. Oh, we see that today. Some people so in love and power hungry that they cheat, rob, steal, kill everybody to keep their power to themselves. But look at here come the Sadducees and the Pharisees and look what he called them. You brutal of vipers. Hey, hey, don't, don't, don't worry about it. There's some vipers out there. Because everybody that come to church ain't come to see Jesus. Everybody that came to church didn't come to see Jesus. The Pharisees and Sadducees are out here because they church services started to get a little deep. Have you ever had somebody 
tell you to do something that they ain't doing. It's like trying to tell somebody to build it, bro, trying to tell you how to stop drinking. Burn in the fire. 